flashing open WRT to an indoor wireless access point. So I have this device that does not indicate what model it is but only for the fact that it is called or EcoI branded. Now going to the website and to the indoor access points, I have determined that it is this one, dual band ceiling mount APIK-S1. Unfortunately, it is controlled by a central device that I don't have, so we need to flash open the WRT for us to use this. And we have the LAN and the one port that are power over internet and a reset button. Now we have to disassemble it to determine the CPU inside. And it is secured by three Phillips screws. And as you can see from the inside, we have a single board. The RAM is on the left side, the black uh, one with many pins. And the central one or the CPU is the AR9341. Just a close look up. And some jumper pins uh, unpopulated on the left side lower depth. And we have this logo near the R101 which is a Comfas logo so I guess they just rebranded this as EcoY the red LED the serial console pins that we will need to solder some cables in there just checking the board again so we have these two antenna wires that are soldered to the board and some conversion uh, system or circuit to convert the power over ethernet to a more usable uh, voltage so now we'll check whether the console pins are enabled and are running with a multimeter now let's start with the vcc and the vcc has 3.35 volts now checking rx and tx so we have 2.6 volts so we can just use our favorite 3.3 volt USB serial. Now I'll just uh, remove or check the back side of the board because we did not get to see the SPI flash chip. So it must be on the back side. So again it is secured by uh, 3 Phillips screws. And just uh, careful because we can actually damage the antenna wire that is soldered here so just carefully remove it blurring out the serial number and we can see now at the back there is this chip on the lower side or lower uh, center and this is the SPI flash chip which we can dump the firmware if we want to. Now pay attention to the highlighted part. This is the USB or the serial console. And I have soldered some pins there and plugged in my CP2102 USB serial. Just connect it as follows. Do not connect VCC. Just connect RX to TX and TX to RX and GND to GND. Now start up PuTTY and get your COM number on the device manager or device management. So again, we have done this on a different YouTube video tutorial, so I'm just repeating it. So again, you can see COM6. So let's just start PuTTY, set the speed and power on the device. And as you can see, we have the boot logs. And U-boot is not locked. So judging from this console output, this is a customized OpenWRT variant. Unfortunately, there is no failsafe mode that we can trigger that I know of. I'll just wait for the boot sequence to complete.
pressing enter i am prompt to enter this p but it does not give any output so i'll just restart it again and let's interrupt uboot this time and we are now at the uboot menu and there are some interesting commands first print l this will give us the information on the uboot and you can see there is a static ip that in which they will look for the firmware bin file so we need to set our computer to this static ip the 192.168.1.10 so just setting up the static ip we have done this on our different videos again so just check all my videos out So again 192.168.1.10 192.168.1.1 and then press ok and another one we have this httpd command that will start some recovery thing and here it is the firmware update on the uboot menu Now looking for information with the device on Google, we can see the Comfast CF325N. Just checking it once again. And looking for OpenWRT, it seems that it doesn't exist. So this Comfast device is similar to my device because I guess they just rebranded it. So this is some information about the device that we did not get in the EcoY website. So based on that, this device has 64 megabytes of RAM and 16 megabyte of flash memory. Now we need to look for other OpenWRT of Comfast that has the AR9341. And fortunately, we found this one, the Comfast CF-E316N that has been discontinued and is using the last 19.07 OpenWRT firmware. But the CPU matches and the Ethernet ports matches. So we'll just try to install this firmware on our device. Just download the firmware upgrade. Rename it to firmware.bin and visit again the website or the 192.168.1.1 Click browse and get the firmware file and hit update So on the lower left you can see the real-time update on the serial console So we'll determine if the system successfully flushed the firmware or if it fails It may take a while because it's erasing the old firmware and writing the one that we uploaded. And the update is done and the device is now rebooting. Now we'll observe whether the update is successful or not. We'll just wait for the boot process to complete. And the boot is complete. Now we need to remove the static IP that we set earlier. And visit the OpenWRT website or the admin dashboard. And as you can see, we have flashed the firmware now to this ECOA device. Just checking the web 
status or settings. Now in the next part, I might create a video on how to configure this device. But for now, we'll just check the firmware and if it works. So disclaimer, this device firmware is out of date. So we'll just use this for the sake of this video demonstration. I might also create a custom firmware for this one that has the packages installed. But again, this only has 64 megabytes of RAM and 16 megabytes of flash memory. So stay tuned for the next part and thank you for watching.